I, it's really my honor to take the interview with you. I don't think I'm the best one to do this, but personally, uh, I am really honored to have this. <laughs> it's a pleasure to do this with you. Uh, let's you try to much. do our best. Yes, yeah. yes. That's a very interesting question. I've thought about it quite a lot. I think there are social problems. Um, in Japan, there are serious social problems, in fact, around um, people having big expectations of Japanese housewives. If you're married and you have children, you have to be the perfect wife and mother, as well as being an excellent scientist. That is pretty busy, I think. So I think that's why maybe Japan is even more difficult than in the UK. In the UK, I think, there are a lot of women who are scientists at lower levels, but not so many women leaders. And I think that's maybe, again, because women are busy with things and they may choose to focus on their science. And this double job of science and leadership is very tough. So when I moved to Japan from UK, I decided to do leadership and not run a lab anymore. Doing two is difficult for anybody, I think. And that wasn't because of domestic pressure or something, you know. My husband is a great cook and domestic person. I think there's quite a lot of societal pressure on women to look after the family, to look after their parents, to look after their husband, to look after their children. That's what I would actually think, really. I, I really feel interesting young women early from elementary school, taking in role models, talking to them about what fun you have doing science. In high school, getting girls to come into labs and work out that science is not, you know, I think sometimes it's viewed as rather dry and not so um, connected with people as other things. I'm very struck by one thing, which is really in the UK, a lot of girls who choose science choose psychology. And psychology courses have, le have almost entirely women on them. So why is that? I think it's because they think that is a science that's related to people. Now I think all science is related to people and I think science is a very creative and interactive job. But I think unless we take those girls into labs when they're in high school and say, look, this is fun, you're hanging out with your friends, you're thinking, you're chatting, it's, it's not this crazy professor in their office. It, it, it's actually a team job. I think if we can get that across, girls will take other forms of science, actually. I think, I mean, I, I work very much in the biotech industry, and so I was working with gene delivery for gene yeah. therapy, which works for some diseases if the delivery can be got to work. And I think also this CRISPR field is undoubtedly going to be awarded a Nobel Prize. I think the hype around how it may solve our medical problems is a bit like gene therapy many, many years away. Yeah, like There's always a hype on the technology and then 40 years later a patient benefits. Yeah. Yeah. First hype around gene therapy was in the 80s probably. So that was a long time. And I think stem cell therapy, or which already has a Nobel Prize for the basic discovery, or uh, CRISPR-Cas9, Again, I think there'll be a prize, but then I think it'll wait for 40 years until the patients are really benefiting, yeah. in general. Yeah. There's so many steps in between the lab and the patient. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's an interesting question. I was really a chemist until I, I, I got to university, basically. I was also very interested in elements and their discovery. Yeah. My dad was a nuclear physicist. So that Marie Curie is a big story, you know, for everybody, I think, actually. It's also quite easy to understand this purification of radioactivity and so on. So that, that was definitely a scientist. And I think when I was in Cambridge, I sort of didn't understand how distinguished all these people were that I was mixing with. You know, it was very funny. All Nobel laureates teaching us undergraduates, which is crazy, you know, just crazy. And so then I think that time influenced me a lot, being a student and being taught by really good experimental scientists, because Cambridge in the UK is the home of experimental science. I think that period was very formative. It's investing very heavily in science. This is great. It's funding, has good funding. I think it's giving freedom to young people. That's great as well. Um, people are allowed to follow their nose, do what they want. Um, I think I've said this to you before, too much pressure on the Nobel Prize, you know? So be proud of the technology you have. And why not be the best country in the world for technology? You know, Korea has wonderful technology. So if that's what you're gonna do, 
as well as great science, why not be proud of that too? You know, so I, I, I've been impressed. I think people are young, enthusiastic. The country seems to really value science, which is great. You know.